Hello and welcome to Silverton Evangelical Church. Wherever and whenever you are listening, you're very welcome. You're also welcome to just listen to the service, but also to join in our Zoom coffee at 11.30 after the service if you would like to. Today, this is going to include communion. So if you'd like to, enjoy, uh, to join us for this, have a little bread and wine or juice ready before you click on the Zoom link at the end of the service. It's good to worship God together, so let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you are with us. And that seems a strange thing to say because we're not even together physically or geographically. And yet we believe that you are not bound by time or space. And so we can say with confidence that you are here with us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Many of us can testify to your goodness and grace to us over many, many years. And we are so thankful. Thank you that you are a God who loves to bless his children and loves to communicate with us. We want to hear from you today, Lord. And so we pray that all that happens in this service today will glorify your wonderful name and will bless and build up your church in Silverton. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you join us today as we are part of the way through learning from the story of Joseph from the first book in the Bible, Genesis. We have reached the point in the story where Joseph was put into prison unjustly, Genesis chapter 39, but God proved faithful and still gave Joseph success. So before we continue with the Joseph story, let's praise God now for his faithfulness from before Joseph's time up to now and forever as we sing, crown him with many crowns. And no 
week's talk uh, about uh, Joseph overcoming the temptation from Potiphar's wife, one of our church members, Tim, was reminded of an incident he experienced a few years ago. Tim is going to tell us about it now. Good morning everyone. I just thought as we're studying the story of Joseph in our next series at church, I just wanted to share a quick um, story about what happened to me a few years ago, which I hope you find really interesting. So I was doing Australian Open Hours the same time three years ago, and I was getting a taxi into work for my midnight start. And the taxi driver was telling me about his struggles in his job, about how at one point he was so tempted to do so, he would have regretted that it would have cost him more than his job because his passengers would just been really horrible and he tried to do a runner. And so he said to me, no, I resisted and I ran away from what would have been a great, great mistake. And I said to him, oh, that's funny because at the moment I'm studying about Joseph in my Bible in a year. And I'm on the part where he runs away from his temptation and his sin, potential sin. And how when his um, Potiphar's wife tried to sleep, get him to sleep with her, he ran away and said, no, no and no and then the taxi driver looked at me and said well that's a coincidence because my name is Joseph and it just got me thinking about how the Bible is so alive and active it's so relevant in our lives and God will speak to us in many different situations to share his word with others so I just thought you would find this encouraging or well, I hope so anyway and just to demonstrate how God is talking to us today. Thanks very much, Tim. Isn't it amazing how God communicates with us today? In our house group about two weeks ago, our esteemed leader, Tom, did a quiz on Joseph. And one of his questions was, what was Joseph's nickname? The answer, of course, Joseph the Dreamer. Now, not only did Joseph have some amazing dreams, but he also had the gift of interpreting dreams, another way that God speaks to us today. Some years ago, when we were still living in Somerset, I had a dream. It featured a lady from our church called Hazel. And in the dream, I was told I had to tell Hazel to carry on and do not give up. When I woke up, the dream was still very vivid and I just felt it was God telling me to tell Hazel to carry on and not to give up. Whatever that meant, I had no idea. On the Sunday at church, I saw Hazel and explained what had happened with the dream and gave her the message which I believed was from God. Carry on with what you were doing. Don't give up. Hazel replied, Andy, you're the third person to tell me that. The follow-up to this was that a couple of years later, 
I had a breakdown and had to take early retirement from work on health grounds. So I became the house husband while Val went out to work. But one of the people outside of the family who was most supportive to me during this time was Hazel. More recently, Val and I were asked to go back to our old church in Somerset to help with an auction sale, which was being held in aid of the Mapongwe Orphan Project in Africa. The night before we went, I had a dream about a couple uh, from our church in Somerset, Matt and Angie. And when I awoke, I couldn't get them out of my mind. I told Val about it on the journey to Somerset and felt we should pray for them. At the auction, we had put in a lot, offering bed and breakfast and dinner for two people for two nights. The bidding went really well for our lot and it seemed obvious that there was one guy who was determined to get it, which he did. It was Matt of Matt and Angie. A few weeks later they came and spent a weekend with us and over the course of the weekend they shared with us some horrific family issues they were experiencing. It was a privilege to listen to them and then to pray with them. Again, there was no doubt in our minds that God had spoken to us through the dream. Well, we're now going to sing Speak, O Lord, which reminds us of our communication with God and God speaking to us. And after which, Roger is going to speak to us and we pray that we will hear God speaking to us again through Roger.
Well, hi, and thanks so much to Andy and also then to Andy, Val and Tim for sharing with us this morning. That's just great. And welcome to our uh, teaching series on the life of Joseph. I don't know, have you noticed how the TV programmers are very keen to get us attached to a series at the moment? Maybe this is more prevalent during lockdown as well. So they might rerun a, a previous series telling us when they're available and when they're going to take them down. And that's in the run up to launching the new series. And then they tell us when this is going to take place and how it's going to happen at the same time each week. In some cases, they then make it available in a different place where they're all released at the same time. So if we really need to binge watch, then that's for us. So why do I say that this morning? Well, in our preaching and teaching, we tend to run a series as well. We might have some history from the Old Testament, or maybe something from the life of Jesus, or maybe one of the New Testament letters. And of course, they're independent, they stand on their own, but also they fit together to a point. Now, the life of Joseph is just like that, but in a sense, they really fit together much more. It's when you get to the end that you see how it is that God has been working through the whole situation. So we're in uh, episode three today. So if you've missed one and two, why not go and have a look at them on YouTube? You'll find them YouTube under Silverton Evangelical Church. Three weeks ago, you'll hear Andy launching our series on the life of Joseph. And then a, a week ago, in his second talk that day, he did two that day, um, you'll find the, the next stage in his life. After today, well, I'm afraid you won't be able to binge watch because I'm not even sure that the rest have been shot yet. But hopefully week by week, you will find the next instalment until we get to the end of the life of Joseph. So have a look at some stage on one and two. And if you've already done that, just as a little refresher, you remember that uh, Joseph is a son of Jacob. God had called Abraham some time before and Abraham had had two sons and through one of them was the blessing going to come for the Jewish nation and then to the whole world. So Isaac uh, then had one, uh, two sons. He had uh, Esau and Jacob and Jacob had 12 sons and this is where we find Joseph. He is one of the 12 and there's an issue. Joseph is his favorite son. Yes, that's right, you know the one of the, the multicolour coat and that fantastic musical. But he is his favourite and God has shown him that actually his brothers are going to bow down to him at some stage as well. So he's not very popular. And one day Jacob sends Joseph off to find his brothers who are taking care of the sheep. Now this was quite some, some distance away. He didn't know exactly where they were and he had to go and find them. And when he's approaching, his brothers see him coming and they decide that they've just had enough of him. They're going to get rid of him. And so they plot to kill him. But that then gets changed and they find an opportunity to sell him to some slave traders. So a modern day, uh, sorry, an old, an old version of a modern day trait, which is just so terrible. And so he's sold to these traders who take him down to Egypt and he is then sold on to one of Pharaoh's officials, a man called Potiphar. But the, the Bible is very clear that God is with him. Chapter 39, verse two says, the Lord was with Joseph and he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. So he had an important position because God was with him and he was doing a good job. But as we heard last week from Andy, his uh, Potiphar's wife also had designs on Joseph and she made a play on him. It didn't work and because of it, she had him put in prison. So Joseph was improperly imprisoned, but God is still with him. We find at the end of chapter 39, but while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favour in the eyes of the prison warder. So the warder put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison 
and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warder paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Now we don't quite understand, do we, how it is that prisoners could actually be responsible for others, but this is what is happening. And then sometime later, the beginning of, of chapter 40, uh, we've got quite a lot to get through uh, today. We've got chapters 40 and 41, 80 verses in total, so don't worry, I'm not going to read every bit. There's a lot of narrative, and so we'll work our way through the story, if that's okay with you. So he's in prison, and there are two new prisoners brought in, uh, the baker and the cupbearer. They have they've had a high position with Pharaoh but he's angry with them. Now we find how Joseph is behaving, how he's living out in this difficult situation doing the very best that he can. Verse 6, when Joseph came to them the next morning and he saw that they were dejected, so he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, why are your faces so sad today? You see the caring that he's giving to these men? Well they both had dreams they didn't understand them but Joseph explains to them that it's God who will interpret the dreams then Joseph said to them this is verse 8 do not interpret interpretations belong to God tell me your dream so they told them the first one the cupbearer told him the dream and Joseph was able to interpret it for him and there was good news verse 13 within three days Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position and you'll be put and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand just as you used to do when you were his cupbearer and then Joseph makes a request on him but when all goes well with you remember me and show me kindness mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison and so when the the baker hears that there is such a good outcome he is then looking forward to the interpretation of his dream. Sadly, it's not good news for him because instead of being released after three days, in three days, I'm afraid he is going to be killed. So one is released and one is not. And at the end of chapter 40, we hear that the chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. And so Joseph has done the right thing. He has been living well and he, he has engaged with this man, but this man has forgotten him. And we go into chapter 41. When two full years have passed, so Joseph is there carrying out his tasks for the next two years, then Pharaoh has a dream. In fact, Pharaoh has two dreams, but we discover that Pharaoh has a problem. Verse eight, in the morning, his mind was troubled. So he sent for all the magi magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one could interpret them for him. And it's at this point that the cupbearer remembers. He is reminded of what had happened before when he was in prison with Joseph. And so he says to Joseph, to, to Pharaoh, that Joseph is the man for the job. So verse 14, so Pharaoh sent for Joseph and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. Pharaoh said to Joseph, verse 15, I had a dream and no one can interpret it, but I have heard it said of, of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Notice Joseph's response. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. And so Pharaoh tells Joseph the dream of both dreams. He explains to them, to, to him what he had seen. We probably know the story, don't we? There's going to be five, uh, seven years of feast, seven great years for the crops, and then seven years of famine. Verse 28, it is just as I've said to Pharaoh, <coughs> excuse me, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that will follow will be so severe. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God 
and God will do it soon. So God is in control of all of these things and he is revealing to Pharaoh what is going to happen so that Pharaoh can be prepared. And notice now how Joseph makes use of the opportunity. So he's not just there passively. Yes, he's passive in the sense that he is delivering God's message, but he doesn't just remain passive. And now, verse 33, now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. So Joseph suggests a plan. Pharaoh can see that he needs someone to take control. And who better to do that? Well, of course, Joseph is the man for the job, isn't it? Because he has interpreted the dream and he has suggested to Pharaoh the way ahead. Verse 37, the plan seemed good to Pharaoh and all his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man on, in whom is the spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of my palace and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. What a transformation. The young man who has been sold by his brothers, who's been imprisoned because of something he didn't do, now in a foreign country ruling over the people preparing them living through seven good years but preparing them for the challenges to come and so we have a sense don't we of God being at work that God is working in the background of all of this but Joseph also has a responsibility he has a responsibility to do what he can to listen to God but to do what he can in all of these circumstances. Now we have gone through the narrative very quickly and so we have a sense that maybe it unfolds quite quickly and I don't know about you but sometimes I get impatient when things don't happen but if we go back to chapter 37 we will find out in verse uh, 2 Joseph a young man of 17 was tending the flocks and we don't know exactly when he was sent out to meet his brothers, but we get the impression that it's soon after this. So it may be that he's still 17 when this takes place. Well, why do I mention this? Because we find in chapters 41, we're told his age when it was that he's taken into the service of Pharaoh. Verse 46 of chapter 41, Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So that means that 13 years have passed by, presumably the time when he was taken down into Egypt, traveling down into Egypt. Then the traders would find uh, Potiphar and sell him. He would then settle into the home there before he would actually rise up to his position. We don't know how long he was in that position before he was then imprisoned for something he didn't do. And we're told that there are more than two years pass after the cupbearer has been released before Pharaoh has the dream and he's brought out to interpret it. So all of these things take quite some time. Remember, he's away from his family. He hasn't seen his family in the whole of these 13 years. And there are another seven years of feast while he is running the show in Egypt. So it's actually really 20 years that he is away, uh, away from his family Jacob, his father, thinks that he's dead and his brothers have no idea where he is or what is going on. And that's why I was talking earlier about a series, because I'm sure now you'll be desperate to hear the rest of the story. What's going to happen next? Is this going to be something happening with his family and is there going to be a meeting? Well, yes, there is. Later on, and we'll be covering this over the next few weeks, there is a meeting between him and some of his brothers and eventually his father. Sorry, I'm spoiling it for all the preachers who are going to come next. And at the end of uh, this, the story in Genesis, we're told how it is that God is working in all of this. And so while there are some terrible things that happened, God was using those things that his purposes might come about. And of course, Joseph is then the forerunner to uh, the, the development of the, the tribes of uh, Israel and eventually one of them 
uh, leads to the birth of Jesus and we then see this as being our history don't we so we have a sense of God working his purposes out God's planning plans coming to fruition but within some very strange behavior of the people how this works in practice well none of us really know do we but we have a sense of God working things out and we having to be faithful and trusting within that we have a part to play as Joseph did he engaged with the baker and the cup bearer he engaged with Pharaoh when he had the opportunity to present him with a plan he was obviously a man of initiative and I wonder if we can see that that's something which is really important for us today we're looking aren't we in this time of the virus the pandemic and the challenges that we are facing as individuals the challenges that we face as a church the challenges that we face as a nation or as as the world God is still in control we don't understand why it is exactly that some of these things have happened but if we are taking these principles into our lives today then we can have that sense of trusting God that whatever is going on he is in control now I'm not diminishing the things that we have been through for some loved ones have have been lost and that is so sad children have suffered schooling has been taken away it's been very difficult for people when they have been told to isolate so I'm not wanting to diminish that in any way but what I would like to remind us is that God understands that God is in control of these things and he calls us to walk this way and he calls us then to respond with love and kindness when we are presented with the opportunity but also to take up challenges when they come our way to say yes that's something that I can get involved in that's something that I can do and who knows where this will lead where will this virus take us there's so much talk isn't there now about what happens next and how will we, we will open up really we have no idea at the moment how that will unfold but hopefully we are able to trust God in the way that we can see that Joseph did and that he walked with God bit by bit through all the difficulties and so for my prayer for myself for my family for the church for all those around me and even further afield is that we might too trust God in this challenging time looking to the future and of course ultimately we know that one day we will be with him and that is our ultimate hope isn't it but also that he will be with us day by day many times in this story we are told how God is with Joseph and he has blessed him and so we just make ourselves available to God and say here we are please take me please use me that your purposes might be brought into being that I trust you even in these difficult situations go with us we pray and therefore let's just pray together now that God might truly bless us that he might be with us and that we might be able to speak into this situation with those around us particularly those who don't know the love of Jesus that they too might come to have that hope in him Father God we thank you so much that you love us so we are so grateful we trust you we believe that you are working your purposes out even in these difficult and challenging situations and so we just want to say thank you maybe that is difficult sometimes to say thank you in such situations but we say thank you please help us as we walk this way please go with us that we might truly follow you and be your disciples for we ask it in your name amen can I just say that if you're finding this particularly difficult at the moment you know that we do have a care team within the church why not get in touch give Andy or myself or others on the care team a call we will be limited sadly in the things that we can do at the moment because we are restricted but uh, we would love to be able to do what we can and if you just need someone to have a chat they're available at the end of a, of a phone just to have a call with you because we would really love to be able to support you in whatever way we can. So may God bless you. Thank you.